Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're going to walk you through step-by-step step and show you guys how to fill out a Form 1 to make your own NFA firearm. A few preliminary things before we get started. There's a slight difference in the way a Form 1 is filled out depending upon whether you do it as an individual or using a legal entity like a trust. If you use a legal entity, you'll also need to download and have each responsible person complete the responsible person questionnaire. If you're confused about what a responsible person is, go check out the video on ATF41F here and be prepared for longer hair. No good dirty hippies! Links to the forms are down in the description, but you should always check to make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the form, as they do change from time to time. While you're getting things together, here's a word from our TGC partner. LaserMax offers some of the most rugged aiming assist devices around. With a low profile option, such as their guide rod lasers, you can keep that factory look or even add a tack light without taking up rail space with the laser. Combining over 25 years of experience with modern materials and technology, these things are built to last. Available in red, infrared, and green for many popular handguns. To learn more, head over to lasermax.com. Let's get started. Pro tip, you'll want to fill out the form on the computer if possible. This allows ATF to efficiently enter the information rather than having to decode your handwriting. In box one, you'll place a check next to tax paid, as you'll be paying the tax to make your NFA firearm. In box two, you'll place a check next to individual, if you're completing that form as yourself, an individual, or a check next to trust or legal entity if you're going that route. Either way, you're only checking one of those selections. Box 3A can be ignored, as that likely won't be applicable to you. Box 3B will contain your name and address if you're filling it out as an individual, or your legal entity's name and address. Pro tip, the information in box 3B is the stuff that gets engraved on your firearm. That would be your name or legal entity, name, city, and state. Box 3C can be left blank unless the mailing address is a P.O. box, in which case you must put the physical address of yourself or the entity in that box. 3D is the county where the physical address is located. 3E is your phone number and 3F is your email if you wish to provide it. There's no downside to doing so. Okay, simple enough, right? Let's keep going. At this point, we're ready to move on to the firearm information. Box 4A is going to be the name and address of the manufacturer of the firearm. It's important that you copy this information directly off of the firearm itself. Pro tip, if the firearm is imported, and guys, there's a lot of guns that you may not think are imported that actually are, you'll want to ensure that you have the manufacturer information and not the importer information. Box 4B is the type of firearm you'll be making. The most common in my experience has been a short barrel rifle. Other examples could be a silencer, short barrel shotgun, AOW, or a destructive device. Box 4C is the caliber of the firearm you'll be making. Pro tip, multi is no longer accepted by ATF for caliber. You must select a single caliber to register the firearm as. For some NFA firearms, if changing the caliber is possible, for instance, changing an upper on an AR-15 short barrel rifle, you can notify ATF with a letter stating that you've added an additional configuration and give the details. Box 4D is the model of the firearm. Again, this comes directly off of the firearm itself. Box 4E and 4F are the lengths of the barrel and overall length. If you aren't sure how to measure the barrel length or overall length, check out the video I did on that by clicking the link in the description. If you're building a silencer, this would just be the overall length of your silencer. Box 4G is the serial number of the firearm. Again, this information comes directly from the firearm itself. Box 4H should be left blank. While the instructions for Box 4I allow you to use an additional sheet to explain why you want to make your own NFA firearm, most people just use all lawful purposes. You can get cute and use things like to repel zombie hordes, communists, etc., but I wouldn't recommend it. Boxes 4J through 6 don't apply to you. If they do, you probably don't need to be watching this video anyway. However, you will need to answer box 4K, which will likely be a no. You'd know if you were reactivating a firearm. Box 7 is your signature. Box 8 is your name if you're completing the application as an individual, or your name and title, for example, trustee, 
if completing the application as a legal entity, box 9 is the date that you signed the form. Box 10 is the information of your chief law enforcement officer where you'll send the Clio copy of the form 1 to. I use my county sheriff. Boxes 11, 12, 13, and 14 are not to be completed by a legal entity. Those using a legal entity will pick up with the responsible person questionnaire. Just note, there are some questions on there that will require the same information that you've already completed on the Form 1, such as the name and address of the applicant, which is the legal entity itself, the firearm information, and the Clio information. Pro tip, the Clio for the responsible persons may be different than that of the Clio for the legal entity if they reside in different areas. For example, if the entity is located in one county, let's say Chester County, and the responsible person is located in another, let's say Lancaster County, and you are sending the Clio notification to the county sheriff, the Clio will be different on the Form 1 and the RP questionnaire since the entity and RP reside in different counties. Complete box 11 through 14 on the Form 1 if filling out the form as an individual, otherwise complete page 2 on the responsible person questionnaire. These questions are very similar to those on the 4473 that you're likely familiar with. You'll also need to affix a passport photo to the form or questionnaire. After completing the questions, you'll sign and date. Remember, if you're filling out the RP questionnaire, skip 11 through 14 on the Form 1. If you're an individual, skip boxes 15 and 16 on the Form 1. If you're using a legal entity, put the number of responsible persons for your entity in box 15 and list them by name in 16. You'll need to ensure you have completed responsible person questionnaires for each RP listed when you submit the application. Box 17 is where you select your method of payment. Pro tip, I always suggest a check or money order. There have been numerous instances where the credit card information has been input incorrectly and resulted in a form being rejected. A couple of other important things. The forms are labeled at the bottom as to where they go. Two copies of the Form 1 go to ATF and one to the Clio. A copy of the RP questionnaire, if applicable, goes to ATF and one goes to the Clio. Don't forget to affix the passport photos to the Form 1 or RP questionnaire. Don't use staples to do it. Tape or glue only. You'll also need to include two copies of your fingerprint cards in the ATF mailing. That's two per responsible person if doing it as a legal entity. If you're doing it as a legal entity, you'll also need to include a copy of the documentation for it, for example, a copy of the trust itself. Then mail the stuff to ATF at the address located at the top of the Form 1 and start your wait. All right, let's recap. Once you've filled out your form, you'll need to mail ATF a few things. If you did it as an individual, you'll send two copies of the Form 1 which have a passport photo affixed to the form, two fingerprint cards, and a check for $200 if you're not using a credit card. You'll also need to send your Clio a copy of the Form 1. Make sure you've signed the form in boxes 7, 14, and 17. If you did it as a legal entity, you'll send two copies of the Form 1, a copy of the RP questionnaire for each RP with a passport photo affixed to the form, two fingerprint cards for each RP, and a check for $200 if you're not using a credit card. A copy of the Form 1 goes to the Clio where the legal entity is located, and a copy of each RP questionnaire goes to the Clio where the RP resides. Again, make sure you've signed the form in boxes 7 and 17, as well as on the RP questionnaire. If you found this guide useful, make sure to share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't subscribed already, you better make that happen. Be sure to ring that bell so you don't miss an episode. Check out my website, adamkraut.com, and as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.